So it is a great privilege in our life to come together in the presence of God to worship the Lord and also and also li to listen from the Word of God. Hallelujah. So as we, we have been uh, listening from the testimonies of the people, that God is in control and God will do the miracles for the people of God. And we believe that. Amen. So we'll be continually praying for all the people and uh, uh, God is going to bless every one of us. I mean, in this morning also. So uh, we are going to look into the Lord in prayer uh, for the for the uh, for the word of God and uh, shall we close our eyes in the presence of God for, for, for a moment and let's pray together for the blessing of the word of God. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us together in your presence of God. We commit ourselves to the mighty hand of God. And Lord, as we are sitting in the presence of God this morning, Lord, we are expecting the great things from you, Lord. And speak to us, O God, so that uh, every person will be encouraged by the word of God and we will be edified by the word of God this morning, O God. Please commit everything in the mighty hand of God. Take, a, take care of us and control us, O God. Thank you for hearing a prayer, O God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Praise God. So last Sunday, I was preaching uh, on the topic called uh, uh, Christian Liberty and the Brotherly uh, Obligations. Christian uh, Liberty and the Brotherly Obligations. Amen. Uh, but but uh, because of the uh, lack of time, I was not able to complete the, uh, the, the sermon. Uh, I could preach only uh, the introduction of the message and uh, also the first two points of the message. Amen. So, and it was, it was mainly on the basis of uh, uh, two verses. It was from Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, and 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. Amen. And I believe that, that uh, you all are well informed about the context and the spiritual, uh, cultural, religious, and uh, 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 moral, uh, uh, moral uh, I mean, background of the uh, uh, church at Corinth. So I went, I, I've been explaining all those things. Uh, uh, in, in, the, in the previous Sunday, uh, what is the, uh, what is the I mean, challenges that the Corinthian church was uh, uh, I mean, facing? You know, there, there were many uh, problems in the church and uh, at the same time, there were many uh, backgrounds, you know, uh, which was influencing them. And we know that uh, the believers of that church were uh, going through uh, various challenges uh, and some of them were uh, highly influenced by the uh, idol uh, worship and uh, uh, immoral activities and many other uh, doctrinal issues. So we have been uh, discussing all those things uh, in the in the in the uh, previous Sunday. So uh, they wrote a letter to Apostle Paul uh, asking him to uh, clarify their confusion. So the epistle of First Corinthians is the reply for their letter. So they had many confusion. They had many uh, means the, the the believers of the uh, Corinthian church, they were having many uh, confusion and they were having many uh, questions to ask uh, uh, Apostle Paul. And when they were writing the letter to Apostle Paul, uh, Paul is trying to, I mean, uh, reply for the letter. That is called uh, the First Corinthians, the letter of First Corinthians, sorry, the epistle of the First Corinthians. And in this letter, Paul is giving uh, some of the warnings uh, against the evil practices of the people. You know, there were many evil practices which was happening in the church at Corinth. So Paul is trying to um, and, uh, make some warning against the, the evil practice, practices of uh, those people. And also uh, Paul is informing them that, I mean, you have to be always reminded about the value or the importance or the greatness of the freedom that you have now as a Christian, hallelujah. So those people were enjoying the Christian freedom in, 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 in a different way. You know, we have to remember one thing that we have the Christian freedom. We have the Christian freedom. At the same time, we must know what is the value and the importance of the Christian, I mean, freedom. We have the liberty. We have the freedom. But we must know what is the greatness of the freedom that we have received from the Lord through the death of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We have the freedom through the death of Jesus Christ or the, through the blood of Jesus Christ. So I believe that you all still, uh, I mean, uh, remember uh, which are those two points that I preached, uh, I mean, last week. I mean, the first point was, I mean, Christian liberty is not the matter of knowledge, but of love. The Christian liberty is not the matter of knowledge, but of love. And the second point was, Christian freedom is subjected to our identity as Christians. 
Christian freedom is subjected to our identity as Christians. And that was from 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1, 3, and 4. I mean, so we have been discussing from that portion, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1, 3, and 4, the two points, I mean, from that portion. And now let us go to the uh, third point. Now let us go to the third point. I mean, uh, just we have to remember one thing that uh, our title is Christian Liberty and Brotherly Obligations. Christian Liberty and Brotherly Obligations. Hallelujah. So once again, we will read that uh, uh, that verse, First Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. I will request uh, uh, Jason, brother, to uh, read the Bible verses today for the message. And uh, I mean, Jason, brother, is going to read First Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. Then we will I mean, move on to the third point of the message. Be careful, however, that the exercise of your rights does not become a stumbling block to the weak. Amen. So the, the third point is like this. Christian freedom should not nullify our belief system. Christian freedom should not nullify our belief system. Um, so for, for, for that, we would like to read a, I mean, a, a two more verses, maybe First Corinthians chapter 9, verses 20 and 23. First Corinthians chapter 9, verses 20 and 23. Amen. To the Jews, I become like a Jew to win the Jews. To those under the law, I become like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law. So it has to win those under the law. Verse 23, I do all this for the sake of the gospel, that I may share in its blessings. Amen. So these are the words of uh, uh, Apostle John. So our third point is Christian freedom should not nullify our belief system. You know, when you read uh, these verses, we understand Apostle Paul was not at all a Christian. Apostle Paul was not at all a Christian, but he was the persecutor of the Christians. He was the persecutor of the Christians. And he was, I mean, killing many people, I mean, with the, with the authority of the priest and high priest. I mean, so in that time, I mean, God called this man and he, God made him as a, as, as a Christian and he became as a Christian and he became as the producer of the Christians. Hallelujah. He was a persecutor of the Christians, but later after the call of God, after the encounter of Jesus Christ, I mean, this man, this Paul became the, the, the producer of the, I mean, Christians. Hallelujah. So these are the words that, I mean, Apostle Paul is saying that I can't do anything. You know, I can become just like a Jew whenever I go to those people. And I can become any person when I'm mingling with those people. At the same time, I'm keeping myself, I mean, to, to understand that I'm not nullifying or, I mean, putting down the value of the belief system of the Christianity. Hallelujah. You know, most of the time, compromising mentality, I mean, makes many issues in our Christian life and in our belief system. You know, most of the time, the people, uh, we, we people, the Christians are many times we are trying to compromise with the other people, compromise with the other people. I mean, what is happening when we do that? I mean, here Paul says, I do all things for the sake of the gospel so that I may become a fellow partaker of it. I may become a fellow partaker of it. That means at any cost, he needs to win someone for Christ. At any cost, he needs to win someone for Christ. That means he became as a Jew and became as under the law means he is not nullifying or putting the value of the Christian faith down or not making the Christian belief system invalid or compromising his faith with the, with the, the pagan rituals. Rather, even though he was, I mean, I mean, uh, mingling uh, with the unbelievers, still was ready to show himself that he is a follower of Christ and he has the belief system. Hallelujah. You know, most of the time what is happening when we are compromising with the, with the, the unbelievers or the other people, you know, most of the time the, the, the value of the Christian belief and the value uh, and the importance of the, I mean, uh, the Christian faith and the belief system is nullified many a times. I mean, so remember, when, he, when we have a friendship with uh, the unbelievers, we should not become like them 
but they must know about Jesus Christ and should follow our faith when we have the friendship with the, the other people. Hallelujah. So we have, a, we, we have to make the friendship with the other people. But we have to think about one thing that if they are not believing in Jesus Christ, when through our action, through our words, and when we spread the gospel to those people, I mean, let them become, become the followers of Jesus Christ. Let them know who is Jesus and let them understand what is the importance and the value of the Christian faith. Hallelujah. For, you know, for uh, uh, example, uh, uh, once there was a man in Kerala, uh, he went to the uh, uh, toddy shop, you know, toddy bar. He went to the toddy shop and uh, to, to share the gospel and to make friendship with uh, the drunkard people. You know, there were many, I mean, there are many, I mean, drunkards. So, uh, what happened, you know, this man, uh, he just went to, went inside the toddy uh, shop and uh, he was trying to uh, share the gospel to, uh, and to make friendship with the drunkards. And what happened, he just remembered the words of uh, Paul in, in this same verse, you know, our first quote in the chapter 9, verse 20, uh, Paul says that I became a Jew to win them, to win them. So he was just remembering that verse and he was saying, okay, if I go to the uh, toddy shop, I can, uh, I can share the gospel to those people and I can also, I mean, uh, I mean uh, make all those people as Christians and I can share the, I mean, about Jesus Christ to those people. And this man also had to drink the alcohol and he became one among them. You know, he just went inside the toddy shop to share the gospel. But what happened, you know, he also drank the alcohol and he was saying that, okay, after drink, drinking the alcohol, I also will be sharing the gospel with them. And uh, I mean, I will make all these people, I mean, the good people and the, and the Christian people. And what happened, you know, but after that, he never got a chance to share the gospel. Rather, he also became a drink God. So this is happening many times in our Christendom. Hallelujah. So we must be strong enough to enough about our biblical belief system and the Christian freedom should not be nullified or make invalid the Christian belief system. So we have to think about one thing that God has given us the Christian freedom. We have the liberty Hallelujah. Thank God for the Christian liberty that we are enjoying in the presence of God. At the same time, it is given for us to, to win the people, not to nullify the, the, the Christian faith or the belief system of the Bible. Hallelujah. You know, uh, uh, I can tell you one thing from uh, uh, our personal experience. You know, while we were uh, uh, ministering in, in Karnataka, uh, at Bangalore, we used to visit many of the villages of Karnataka. Even uh, in Bangalore city also, there are uh, many uh, congested and populated areas uh, where many families, uh, uh, families are staying together. You know, uh, we got many chances to uh, share the gospel to uh, those people in villages. And also, I baptized many uh, local Canada people there also. I mean, you know, uh, when we visit uh, those houses, the, the, the amazing parties, the living room of those houses are like a small temple. You know, when we go through that way, you can understand that inside, when you enter inside, the living room of those houses are just like a small temple with full of images and uh, uh, idols of their gods and goddesses with uh, the cantil and the, and the, and what is that, the samprani or, or something. You know, so we, you can you can understand that even if you just in, I mean, enter inside the living room, it is just like a temple. Everything is there. All the gods and goddesses are there and lighting and everything is there. So those people will, uh, sometimes uh, they will call us in Canada, uh, pastor, uh, bunny pastor, uh, olagada bunny pastor, or prayer mari, uh, olagada bandhu, uh, prayer mari pastor, uta mari yogi pastor, uh, all those things, you know, uh, means the uh, uh, pastor come inside and uh, uh, pray and uh, eat something and go faster, you know, um, uh, Danny maybe, I um, mean, uh, uh, understanding the, the, the Canada now, okay? So, all I got money, pastor, all I got money, pastor. Uh, that, that means, you know, come inside, pastor, you just pray for us and uh, eat something uh, from our house and, uh, I mean, pray and go faster. So, you know, we cannot avoid all, all those people. Hmm? We will have to do all the things, you know, whatever they ask, because, I mean, they are inviting us to their house, even though, I mean, they are not believing in Jesus Christ, they know that the prayer is, is, is amazing. And they are just inviting inside. And we have to do all the things there and will share about Jesus 
and pray for them. Amen. So uh, they will come before us and they will we'll be, I mean, putting our hands upon them and we we'll pray for them inside the house, inside the house, in the village. But we never promote the idol worship, but we still love them. Hallelujah. So there are many idols inside the house. At the same time, we love those people, but we are not promoting the idol worship and we are not worshiping the idol also. But we have to love them and we have to pray for them. And at the same time, we cannot, I mean, nullify the, the belief system of the, I mean, Bible, I mean, in front of them. So we must be very strong enough on our biblical, I mean, system. And the Christian freedom should not nullify or make invalid the Christian belief system. Hallelujah. So that's it. That's the third point that I would like to share with you. Hallelujah. And we will go to the fourth point now. The fourth point is, I mean, uh, Christian freedom should not be a stumbling block to the weak ones. Christian freedom should not be a stumbling block to the weak ones. Amen. For that, we will read uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 9 and 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 9 and 10. Be careful, however, that, that the exercise of your rights does not become a stumbling block to the weak. For if someone with a weak conscience sees you with all your knowledge eating in an idol's temple, won't that person be emboldened to eat what is sacrificed to idols? Praise God. So this particular phrase which is used in that passage or the, in that verse is, I mean, the weak conscience, the weak conscience. So in this passage, the weak ones or the weak conscience means those believers who have weak conscience. Okay, the people or the believers, the new believers, those who are having the weak conscience. Okay, so point is, Christian freedom, I mean, Christian freedom should not be a stumbling block to the weak ones, to the weak brethren. I mean, you know, uh, the weak conscience is affected by most of the time with our knowledge. You know, we say that we have the knowledge about those things and these things, but most of the time what is happening, I mean, the weak conscience or the weak people, the weak brethren, they are affected by our knowledge. You know, in verse 4, it, it, it says, you know, in the same chapter, verse 4 says that the strong believers knows that the idol is nothing and idol cannot do anything. Can you read that fourth verse also? Chapter 8, verse 4. So then, about eating food sacrificed to idols, we know that an idol is nothing at all in the world and that there is no God but one. You know, what is that? We know that the idol is nothing. Who knows? Who knows? The strong believers, the strong believers really understand that the idol is nothing and the idol cannot do anything. But the weak believers do not know that the idols are nothing or idols cannot do anything. I mean, or idols, I mean, doesn't have any power. I mean, you know, when you read this passage, you have to understand the background. Already I told you the background of the, 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 the Corinthian church. You know, the majority of the believers uh, attending in the Corinthian church were, I mean, from the Gentile background. So uh, there were many I mean, rituals and uh, I mean, uh, evil practices, practices that, were, that have been influenced uh, to, to, to the Corinthian church believers. So that's the reason, I mean, Apostle Paul uh, is writing in, in this way that you have to be very strong. You know, you have to know the value of the liberty that you have received. At the same time, you have to consider the weak brother, the weak people, or the weak conscience people, and the, I mean, and the people, those who are newly coming to Christ. You know, but the strong believers, I mean, knows it is it, it, it well that because those idols are made by man and about which the psalmist says in Psalms number 115 verses 4 to 7. You know, we know that there is nothing in idol. There is no power for the idol. I mean, we, I mean, worship the Lord who is the living God. He is the, he is the living God. I mean, almighty God, creator of all this universe and everything. And we believe that. We know that. The strong believer know that. At the same time, there are many weak brothers. There are many weak people. I mean, they are not strong. They do not know everything, but they know something about Jesus. And they came and they are attending for the meeting, for the prayer meeting. Hallelujah. So to, towards them, we know that, you know, 
in, in Sam number 115 verses 4 to 7. I mean, read that. I mean, what is an idol? What is an idol? I mean, what is an idol? We will read that verse, so then we will go. But the idols are silver and gold made by human hands. Hmm. They have mouth but cannot speak, eyes but cannot see, they have ears but cannot hear, noses but cannot smell, they have hands but cannot feel, feet but cannot walk. Very clearly we can understand that. You know, we people know, the strong believers, the strong people, they know that idol is nothing because it is written in, in Psalms that I mean, uh, idols are silver and gold and it is made by the hands of men, hands of men, and they have mouth but cannot speak. And uh, I mean, they have eyes but cannot see. They have uh, ears but cannot hear. They have nose but cannot smell. And they have hands but cannot feel. And feet, they have the feet but cannot walk. And they have the throat but cannot make a sound. So it is very clear that idols cannot do anything. And the strong believers are well aware about what is the, I mean, incapability of the idols. That means they cannot do anything. They doesn't have any power. But in verse 10, but in verse 10, Paul says that the strong believers are those who have more knowledge or the elderly believers or the traditional Christians must be careful and must consider the weak and new believers because they do not know of any things. Hallelujah. In verse 10 it says that, Paul says, I mean, there are strong believers. There are strong people in the church. I mean, they may be knowing many things. I mean, they may be knowing that, okay, I mean, they have the knowledge. They have the knowledge that, I mean, we should not do this and we should not do that. At the same time, most of the time, the strong believers are not considering the, 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 the new believers are not considering the new, I mean, I mean uh, believers, maybe, maybe the weak person, the weak people. Okay, the, they doesn't have any uh, knowledge about the Bible or knowledge about the, I mean, Jesus. I mean, so we have to be, I mean, we have to consider the weak brethren or weak people that the new believers, they do not know anything. I mean, so that's why here Paul says, if the weak believer sees that the strong believer is sitting in the temple and eating the food, then the weak ones will think that we can also do all these things. Because the strong believer is eating, so let us also go and enjoy. I mean, so this is what the, the, the point is, you know. Most of the time, the people are looking to the other people. You know, the, the, some of the people are looking to the other people, okay, how they are doing and what they are doing, where they are going, all those things. I mean, but the strong believers are not minding that. They never think about, okay, what those people will think about us. And if you go there, or if, you, if you do this, I mean, you know, we have to think one thing, you know, in, in, in that verse, verse 10, I mean, uh, Apostle Paul says that, if, if a strong believer is sitting in the temple and eating the food which is offered for the idol, the weak brothers and weak ones will think that, okay, no problem. We can also do all those things because the strong believer is eating, the strong, I mean, the pastor is doing that and this believer is doing this and I can also enjoy in that. I mean, and in that way, we may become a stumbling block to those weak believers. And it is very difficult to strengthen those people also. I mean, so many a times we are becoming the stumbling block for the weak brethren, weak people, or the, I mean, I mean, weak conscious people because of this. And we are not supposed to become the stumbling block, I mean, for the, I mean, weak believers. And we are supposed to, I mean, I mean, strengthen the people, I mean, uh, with our knowledge. Hallelujah. And our freedom should never hinder the spiritual health of someone else. And most of the time, we are not considering the spiritual health of the health of the weak people. No, this is this morning. Let me encourage every one of you that let us all, I mean, encourage. Let us all strengthen the the, the spiritually, I mean, I mean, uh, ill people. That means the people those who are not having the health in the spiritual life. I mean, you know, there are many uh, many debates and the arguments regarding uh, some of the Christian faith in uh, YouTube and in Facebook and all those. I mean, uh, social media. But I personally do not encourage uh, uh, those uh, kinds of debates because uh, uh, those things are not uh, uh, healthy discussions. You know, there are many, 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 I mean, clips you can see. You know, the people are arguing and the people are making debates on uh, some of the uh, doctrinal issues of the Christian faith and something. 
you know what happens when we uh, when we uh, i mean make an argument with someone about the christian faith and doctrines okay we ourselves you know we when when i make a, a, a argument or a debate with the other people you know they also know something and i also know something in debate what is happening both parties will will be trying to win with counter points you know one person will have i mean he will try to prove his argument is right then the other also will do the same thing he will have to prove that his argument is true but in healthy and lovely talk on the same topic will give more knowledge and understanding for the both parties i mean there are both two parties you know one party is i mean saying that okay whatever i believe is right and the other person also will say whatever i say is biblical and that is true but instead of making an argument instead of making a debate can be all i mean sit together and have a, a lovely talk lovely talk healthy talk i mean that will make the people to get more knowledge and understanding about uh, the biblical truths i mean most of the time we are not concerned about uh, our brother when we are doing something or when we are speaking something hallelujah so we never think about am i stumbling block to the other weak people we must be more serious about these things hallelujah we must be i mean always we must think that am i a stumbling block to the other big persons hallelujah so remember other the believers who has more knowledge about bible should not be a stumbling block to the weak and our christian freedom should not be a stumbling block to others and should not be a hindrance i mean for others hallelujah and we will uh, go to the i mean fifth point fifth point is the last point and we will go to that point the fifth point is do not use our freedom to sin against the weak brothers and against christ do not use our freedom to sin against weak brothers and against the christ it is from first corinthians chapter 8 verse 12 first corinthians chapter 8 verse 12 you read that verse when when you sin against them in this way and wound their weak conscience you sin against christ amen so two portion, two things are there in that particular verse you know we have the freedom we have the freedom but we should not use that freedom to sin against the weak brethren and also against christ you know when we do something or when we are participating in some religious programs with unbelievers i mean we are sinning against our weak brothers means we are using our liberty to sin against the weak ones and we know that there is nothing in doing all those things and nothing is going to happen if you do something if you do something we know that the strong believers they know that okay if you do that there is no problem because i mean it doesn't have any any power or any authority so we know that at the same time when we are doing that things i mean sometimes we are sinning against our weak brethren and also against of jesus christ it is clearly written in verse 12 i mean the main issue in this passage is eating food which is offered before the idol when you when you when you think about that chapter the whole chapter chapter 8 you know it speaks about the issue is different you know the eating the food which is offered before the idol you know there are mainly four problems when we when a, when a strong believer i mean do this like uh, i mean uh, they feel uh, that uh, we all are one and worshiping the same god okay the unbelievers will be thinking that okay we all are one and we are worshiping the same god secondly we cannot share the real gospel with those people we cannot share the real gospel with those people i mean so we have to keep our identity thirdly i mean always there will be a guilty feeling in us that i should not i mean have done that i should not have done this and that we should have we will have a guilty feeling sometimes and fourthly i mean when when the weak brothers see that they may be offended they may be offended i mean so it is better to avoid many things that we do on the basis of our christian creed hallelujah otherwise that may encourage the new believers or a person who is i mean still having a confusion on the new birth and the and the uh, 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 or the regeneration or the salvation or baptism or all the sin and all the religion to do sin i mean so most of the time what is happening we are doing sin against the weak brothers weak brothers i mean and 
doing that, we are sinning against Christ also. Hallelujah. You know, we think that we have the freedom to do anything. We have the freedom to do anything. There is no I mean, restriction for anything, but it is not like that. Hallelujah. For, the, for, for Christianity, I mean, the biblical uh, truth is, I mean, we have the restrictions. I mean, we cannot do it, all the things, but we have a limitation. We have a limitation. I mean, once we were under the yoke of Satan, once we were under the yoke of Satan, but now we are the, under the yoke of Jesus Christ. I mean, we are the, under the yoke of the Jesus Christ. We have a limitation and we have a restriction. Hallelujah. And we should not use that freedom, should not use that liberty to, to sin against the, the brethren and also sin against the Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You know, let me, let me tell you one thing that uh, uh, once in Kerala, uh, there, was a, there was a believer. One day he just uh, uh, needed uh, the, the, the change of 500 rupees. Uh, a change of 500 rupees and he went to uh, many shops but uh, uh, he didn't get the change at last went inside the toddy shop and he got a cha uh, he got uh, the change also there and uh, uh, but the problem uh, that happened was uh, one believer one new believer of that same church uh, saw him and informed pastor that uh, okay that strong believer that believer and uh, that brother uh, i saw him that uh, he is standing uh, inside the toddy shop uh, and uh, he was bringing the alcohol and coming back from there but this man this i mean poor believer he was not knowing that uh, this i mean strong believer has gone inside uh, to get the change of the 500 rupees i mean but uh, this pastor was asking this man why should why you did uh, did go there I mean, what happened? Why are you doing this? Thing? This this man said, okay, this is what happened. I just went to, when it said the toddy shop only to get the change for 500 rupees. I didn't get from any other shops. I just went inside and I got the changes and I came back. I mean, then this man, this, I mean, this person, the, the, the new believer, he was saying that, no, 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 I saw him that he was drinking the alcohol inside the toddy shop. So uh, I can also drink pastor. I can also drink pastor. Because that person, that strong person is drinking the alcohol. And I can also do that. I can also do that. This is what happening in our Christian world. So many times, you know, the strong believers must be very careful about when you're doing something. Hallelujah. So the weak conscience of that brother has been defined and affected by the strong believers action. That is the meaning of I mean, chapter 8 verse 12. I mean, many times, whenever we are doing most of the time, we are not, not. I mean, thinking about the the, the other people. We are not thinking about the, the about the big brother. I mean, uh, do you all remember that uh, once, uh, maybe uh, some few years ago, maybe uh, two years ago, uh, uh, you know, Indian government has banned uh, the beef in India. You remember that Indian government, Modi ji government, uh, uh, passed the bill against the eating beef, eating beef. You know, and what happened? Uh, 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 there's a the minority religious group of uh, uh, some of the states. I mean, some of the states means uh, maybe in Kerala and Karnataka, some some places in Tamil Nadu also. South Indians, you know, they, they started to protest against the, that bill. You know, Bodhi said, no, no cutting. I mean, meat or no cutting uh, buffalo or no cutting cow. Uh, what is that? Okay, Gomada, Gomada. Okay, so you don't cut that and you don't eat beef. Eh? And some of the young people of Kerala. Uh, and Karnataka also, they conducted the beef festival against this bill. Beef festival against this bill. <laughs> what happened? They they are saying nobody has the authority to uh, authority to say. I mean, you should not eat this one or you should eat that one. Okay, especially Kerala people cannot live without eating beef at all. Even the Hindu people will eat the eat the meat or the beef in in kerala i mean uh, so that was happening there also you know in here in uh, uh, verse 12 in verse 12 paul says that and when we sin against our brother in this way we are also sinning against christ i mean who died on the cross both of us and for our brother hallelujah so that is what uh, i mean verse 12 says i mean jesus christ died not only for you but also for your brother. I mean, that means we are offending God by offending our brother. We are offending God by offer offending, I mean, your brother. So please don't misuse our Christian freedom to sin against our big brethren and against Christ. But remember one thing, 
that the Bible never gives us the permission to eat the food which is offered to the idol because the New Testament, I mean, doctrines are always against the idol worship. Hallelujah. So we believers and we, I mean, Christians must be, I mean, well aware about, I mean, how we are worshiping God. Hallelujah. We are worshiping the living God. We are worshiping the living God. Hallelujah. And we are not worshiping the idols. Hallelujah. But most of the time, we are not considering all our brethren and we are just, I mean, nullifying the, the, the Christian faith in a, in a different way. Hallelujah. So let me, I mean, tell you one thing. By the grace of God, by the grace of God, we have the Christian freedom and liberty to do many things, many things. But remember one thing that, uh, I mean, Christian liberty is not a matter of knowledge, but of love. And the Christian freedom is subjected to our identity as Christians. And Christian freedom should not nullify our belief system. And also Christian freedom should not be a stumbling block to the weak ones and the weak conscious people and do not use our freedom to sin against the weak brothers and against Christ. Hallelujah. So let us all close our eyes in the presence of God as we have been hearing from the word of God. Hallelujah. So this is the time to, I mean, I mean, I mean, summit us with the mighty hand of God and hallelujah as we are, I mean, redeemed with the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And we prophesy and we, we say that, okay, we are the children of God. We are the children of God. And I mean, God has blessed us. And I mean, once we were under the yoke of Satan and now we are under the yoke of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have a limitation and we have a boundary and we have to I mean, think about all the things when we are doing something. Hallelujah. When we speak something, when we do something, I mean, we have to think about what is the value of the liberty, what is the value of the freedom that we received, I mean, through the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I mean, we should not nullify the, 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 the power and the value of the, I mean, I mean, belief system of Christianity. Hallelujah. And the Christian liberty, I mean, is not a matter of the knowledge, but let us love the people. Let's politely speak to the people. I mean, let us, I mean, speak to all those people. Let's make all the friends, I mean, from all the areas, but I mean, try to share the gospel, share about Jesus Christ to those people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And because, I mean, we remember we have an identity that is we are Christians and we are the children of God. I mean, we are supposed to be separated from the world and the worldly pressures and we are the Christians. Hallelujah. So let us all, I mean, summit us with the mighty hand of God. Let us